Hi, welcome to Beck's Bug Out Survivor. Got a real treat for you today. This is something in the pack I've wanted a long time. It's a great bit of kit to transition between being in trees and being on the ground. And it's all the same kit. So whatever I put in the tent would be good for a hammock. Now I've been trying to modify my own kit with hammocks and things like that to try and get it onto the ground also in the event I can't find trees that are suitable or the span's too far, there are no trees and then I can put it on the ground. So I can alternate between environments on different nights on the same track. Now it is heavy it's a military kit so perhaps it wouldn't come out on the track with me but certainly for winter camping this is going to be a solution and it's all being housed in the royal engineers turtleback 60 liters with extra added sewn on pockets in here is just the hammock itself which is also a tent and a sleeping bag They're all the components you're going to need all in one bag there. So it's not going to be the lightest system, but this is for winter and I'll tell you why. When I use my duck down or goose down quilts for my regular hammock in the UK environment, winter with the morning dew and all the precipitation we have, it doesn't make it a very viable option because them quilts wet out so I wanted something totally waterproof to go in the trees and also onto the ground but the great thing about this is this is all you need it is a complete unit I don't need a tarp with this it goes up in the trees I get in and I'm good for the night so this is the Russian special forces mountaineering hammock tent let's go through the components first thing that fell out are these here which I'm using as tree straps this is what goes around the tree nothing more than an overhand knot on one side that goes around the tree and I feed the other side through the loop which leads us here to the pole system Four poles that separate into groups of two, two for the head end, two for the foot end, so you can tell already it's going to be a bridge hammock. So that's the suspension, the pole system, the actual unit itself and the stuff sack. The stuff sack is very generous so I don't struggle getting it in. There's a couple of minor little tears in that which probably is why this is a second but as a second this bit the actual unit itself is like brand new so with one of the suspension ropes which is a lot thicker than the other ropes on the clue I pass behind the tree and just feed the other end through the loop that I've made And notice how I'm locked off to one side of the tree and that's locking back on itself there as you can see with the actual hammock I'm going to unroll it because it has a door the door into the prevailing wind not a good idea or facing the opposite direction so I've got the back to the wind and I get the morning sun this also doubles as my bivvy bag my tent and my all year round 
hammock because it is fit for winter so they say but so I've been told on a personal level anyway not yet tested it myself and this can kind of look confusing it's all the clues on the other side which are these sections here so the beaner is the first thing I will switch out one to one that hasn't got such a sharp gate on it to another one which is black it's kind of pointless having a really good um, camouflage this is woodland and then a shiny beaner just remains for me to put the pole system in and it will consist of two parts one two for the head two for the foot it will be capped off on one side and then chamfered down there now I thought that part there might have been magnetic but it's not so it's just a case of feeding one into the other to create one pole for the foot and one pole for the head which doesn't take a second to do there's nothing difficult about that they're not spring loaded or anything just a manual kind of connection this very end webbing is pocketed so it won't come out there I'm gonna do the other side in an identical manner and then clip on to the actual tree suspension which is here and waiting to go If I come to the top here of the hammock tent, there's a bit of webbing and you attach one of your cords through it. I've put that just on an ordinary bowling hitch, a uh, bowling knot. And this other, I'm going to use a different adjustable knot and put it to the suspension. So when it's pulled, it will make a roof for the hammock tent. And the knot I use to do that is a taut line hitch. Come around the main line once, twice, thrice, and then behind and in. If I loosen the taut line hitch, then the roof will collapse. If I tighten it, the roof comes up. The rain guard here, already a pre-attached line. I'm going to make a loop in the line, reach inside the loop and pull another out to make an adjustable slip knot like that. So I can make this loop larger and pull the pigtail to make that loop shorter, which in turn gets this section here tighter. Slip it into here. And tighten up. And as you can see the access is through a half moon door. I'm going to see if I've got a pad to roll out and put inside here because it has a pocket head and foot to slip a pad in 
Now I've had my inflatable in here, but because I've just got a regular army mat, foam, XPEI mat, I'm gonna pop it in here. And there's the same kind of pocket down the foot end. British Army XPI mat standard is too long for it to go into the other pocket down there but it doesn't matter it's in and that's ready like I said inflatables are great in here as well like yourself inflating pads last night I had my X ped in here and unlike other clued hammocks by the way these are the clues the strings off each one on other hammocks you'd have these almost level and parallel to get a really tight uh, flat lie but on this in order to get this pitch on the roof I'm at the same kind of pitch I would be with any hammock which is around 30 degrees For now, I'm just going to have to put up with these having a little bit more stretch than I would like. And the kind of hitch I had on this, like a slip knot, has tightened up this line here. There's the loop, and I've got to work on this knot to get it undone. It isn't a knot I would use again, so lesson learned. So I won't include this knot into the feature at the end of how we actually connect it to the tree. We'll be using a much safer knot. I'm just gonna take a bit of time out my life to undo this, perhaps a fortnight or so. And the pockets here, I think there's four in total, little mesh pockets. One, two, three, and another one here for each one approximately A4 size. A lantern in here because there is no hanging hook when we come up to the top ridge here. But there's nothing stopping me from popping a little lantern in the mesh here. On the side by the head is a double zip door. This would be to the right of my head and I can reach in, out, get fresh air through or what I could do is undo the secondary zip. And just have the mesh. And this can be done from the inside. So that is now meshed off. So sniper door, shoulder left. The bit here is not that waterproof. I was going to waterproof the whole lot. A row of pals for your molly all the way down here. Now mine has not leaked so far, regardless of it having pinholes. I mean, that one there is a big one. I can see daylight straight through there. It's not a massive hole. It's just zoomed in a hell of a lot. You can see there's another one there on the right of the centre webbing. So yeah, it does need a good rundown with some silica 
Oh, there's a big one right there, right in the middle. Seam seal needs to be done there. And this bed is not waterproof, but all this will need nick waxing. That bit of material, that is not waterproof. Seam seal it as well, or seam tape, one or the other. Hole, 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 hole. Where these mesh pockets are stitched in, you, you can probably spot daylight through there. So yeah, it's gonna need a, blobs of silicone here, there and everywhere. Now I have been reliably informed that this is a lovely warm system for the winter. And I can see why, because I'm fully uh, in sealed. So I'm not breathing in cold air as I would on a civilian hiking um, hammock. So all the air is coming from my body heat as where I'd have to breathe in cold air ordinarily and allow my lung function to keep my heart warm. It's a very inefficient use of body mechanics. I have a, a balaclava which will come up a face covering, a schmag, anything like that. And I also have a ski mask protector, face protector as well, which covers the mouth and is great for winter um, pastimes, fishing, hammocking, camping, whatever your game is. Too much stretch in it. I can start off configured quite high and then end up on my butt. Look at the gate on that, doesn't even close. Look how sharp it is there where my finger is. That'll rip through your cord. So the biggest fail for this so far is the tree line here. Definitely switch it out to a daisy chain. It is really warm in there. The guy said it was gonna be warm for winter. Now I do have down quilt on a lightweight tracking hammock and lightweight tracking tarp. I also have all the under quilts for it. I have a few under quilts. I double stack in winter. But this is going to be something that I want for a transversible system. So one night I can have it on the floor like a tent and the following night if there's uneven ground or boggy terrain and I don't want to put a tent down and have trees I could put it up on trees and I don't need specialist equipment like under quilts or anything like that I can use my standard roll pad air pad and a sleeping bag on top however you would do it in a tent you would do it with this when you get it it might actually already be set up for you and you might not want to change the clue system I certainly do you'll get one of these which is the tree webbing and note how considerably thicker the line is on the left which is a tree webbing you'll also have a long line and a short line and a carabiner two things there for me to swap out significantly quicker than trying to get everything into stuff sacks this is how I can be gone within just a few seconds rather than a few minutes this is my basher pouch I sewn on to my turtle back I don't need a basher so I've got my winter hat and gloves in there waterproof covers for the mittens and the mittens themselves have a pile fleece lining so does my sleeping bag have that pile 
fleece lining also fleece pile lined army hat so I really am prepping now for a cold winter had a cold winter last time had a miserable time as well I'm hoping this is the fix for them sub-zero camps day two and a different pack so you don't always need the big army bergen just to carry it because it's army surplus you can easily transverse that bit of kit to a civilian pack in it i have a mountaineering two-piece sleeping bag and a pretty big cushy air pad as well so it's not like i'm trying to skimp on the smallest units to save space double sleeping bag a big old hefty tent come hammock a big fat air pad and plenty of room for the clothing as well and I bought myself some decent tree straps but I'm still kind of struggling with its pitch I have mine where the angles of the line are like that it's a little bow in it it's not insurmountable it's doable and I've watched somebody else's video say get it tight a total flat bed and I've tried that and it makes it incredibly tippy like that so I'm going to try both methods my way and then level in the bed So I'm going for the level bed first. Now I tested this at home and it did tip violently to one side and the roll backwards. I had no way of saving myself. I'm on full extension with that side. If I wanted it any tighter, I'd tighten it that end. But from my personal experience, it makes it incredibly tippy. I'm going to tidy all this up and put the poles in. Both of them are around hip height because if it does violently tip, tip me to one side, at least I've got a chance of just hitting the deck and not ripping my new hammock tent because I've got a feeling this is going to tip. Now I did tell you the other day, which was about 10 minutes ago for you, that I tried this with an inflatable. I bought it with me, I bought the XPED LW9, so it's the long, wide, 9 centimetres. And that will insulate. Try doing this without an insulator, you get a cold butt, not nice. The foam pad I had wouldn't have really insulated. So I'm going to blow it up and then put it into there. So that's a nice thick pad in there and already it does look incredibly tippy and I might actually take this roof section down because I just don't want it ripping.
so although I'm lying really flat it's very precarious if I was to try and roll I've got my hands stabilizing onto my side I'm out and the pad's slipping no I'm on the ground Got to get that's tipped right on its side doesn't work as I suspected that wasn't going to work with the bed being so flat and the lines so taut made it incredibly tippy as I suspected it would now there is one called the bridge hammock by Dutchware called the Banyan there's the Ridge Runner and they are designed a little better because the metal bar at head and foot is above your head and above your feet so if that was my feet there legs toes the metal bar sits above like that and not below like I have it here making it incredibly tippy if the bar is above your feet in a little u-shaped box then I'm kind of cocooned in an under sling so your body acts like a pendulum and you can't really fall out you'd have to seriously tip yourself out on purpose with this it's doing it when I don't want to so although the Banyan and the Ridge Runner are really good bridge hammocks they're not excellent tents because if I'm only using an under quilt put that on the ground stops working so I do need a pad I'd have to incorporate the tent sort of with a tarp and the hammock so I'm still open to a lot of them cold elements but this is more you concealed inside it a lot more like a proper tent I want this working that's probably above head height there dropping down underneath here to the hammock at I'd say waist level I could get that even lower and there is a dip in the middle of the hammock and that is something I might just have to put up with again I'm not putting the roof up until I know I'm 100% secure still feels tippy but a lot less so as you can see just because I've got better angles on these tree lines here so there's a guy on YouTube who has one of these hammock tents and you can see him put it on a very flat bed and he even sits on it like I'm sitting on mine now but you never actually see him get in I don't think the answer either is getting the roof tied to the tree while it's stretched out as a flatbed I don't think that would stop it tipping either in fact it would rip something out and I just end up having to repair it as a tent it'll be a great little tent but as a tent I have lighter tents as a hammock it's struggling but it's something I've just got to get to work maybe that's all it is so I'm going to play about with the clues on the end and see if I can adjust them so it balances a little better
so you're all wonky let me straighten you up there you go so before I get myself too disheartened and I get you too disheartened I had no idea it was going to be as bad as this I had a fair idea if you put a bed flat and tight with a pole structure it's bound to wobble that's why you have the u-shape footbed and headbed on bridge hammocks and then it's a lot more secure and just as i was packing away i took the poles out and thought i wonder what it's like without the poles and it's working i'm going to put the roof back up without the poles less weight to carry and get back in and see where we're up to now Yeah, the old clues need to be tied off together and I might put a drip ring in and it will stop them slipping from one side to the other. Anyone who knows how to build bridge hammocks and suspend them with the clues knows that it is going to go tippy unless you tie all them off at the end. These tight flat beds do not work unless you're underslung. Now I can actually undersling this, I reckon, by using the hand holes here and actually slinging myself from there but not with the pole but it, they're modifications that are in the future out of the box and into the tree it doesn't work as a hammock by the way poles in first and rather than roll it I can stuff a lot quicker and I can roll it into this bag and get everything packed away a lot quicker I'm going to go home and play with this idea a lot more like I said out of the box and into the tree you're going to struggle it's incredibly tippy when it's tight it's not that much better when it's loose because it hasn't got that U-shape footbed. This is a British Army stretcher hammock. A lot stronger, no stretch, unlike the existing bed here on the Russian Army hammock. This is going to be sewn onto here once I cut this existing bed out and sew this one in that will guarantee no stretch, no stretch means no tip Two, three days of tailoring to put a new bed in. Days work to put the silicon in and let it dry. With the British Army hammock underneath the existing hammock bed here, I'm a lot more stable. So within a week, this could be up and out with me. The actual bed is terrible on the original and the British Army stretcher hammock is awesome and waterproof unlike this bed here which is the existing bed this is going to be sewn onto here once I cut this existing bed out and sew this one in that will guarantee no stretch, no stretch means no tip 